Greetings, here we are. It is time for another group tutorial. Um, this time I pushed out the streaming link first, and I think a number of people have jumped into the um, streaming environment. Hello, watching on YouTube. Um, do try out the uh, comments feature, although there's a Q&A feature. Um, my dashboard, exciting dashboard down here, telling me that there is currently four viewers. Good to have you with us. Um, I've, I'm, in, pre in previous situations, I'm not sure how um, effective the Q&A thing has been. If, if any people have got uh, bits of code that they want to share, problems that they want to um, look at together, then uh, you do need to actually join the Hangout uh, itself. Uh, I've pasted also the Hangout link into the um, a group chat. should be appearing on the site at the moment. Um, yes, but do say hi. You can just say hi in the chat thing. One of the things with the chat is I'm wondering if I can only see things that, that are flagged as questions. Um, anyhow, um, we don't have anybody uh, joining us in the um, the live chat. Here at the, the live chat, the actual the live room here at the moment. Um, I went ahead and started the broadcast because I saw that people were there. I guess what I might do is we can do a little uh, overview of where we are in the course so far while we wait to see if um, anyone shows up in the main room. Uh, I'm going to switch away from my camera and go on to screen share, and uh, let's just check, I've, now got, I've got three monitors up now, with all my different bits and pieces going on in the background. I think, yes, this is the one. We share this one. Ah, uh, well now we're going to have infinite regress there. Yes, let's move that out of the way, and go and grab, um, let's, have a, let's have a fresh Chrome instance, and go and see what's happening with the course. Um, so we'll get into, here and uh, oh, you have so many different things. Here we go. This is the one uh, that we're currently in, isn't it? 1692. Um, yes, so let's have a look. So, yesterday we released um, this new project management material uh, that's down here, uh, as well as part two of homework one fixing a bug in typo. Um, Ah, and Kim Shah is asking, is this a test question, and saying, Sam, can you see this? And indeed, I can see this. I'm going to put, I've got a button here to uh, press select, and uh, I can see it. And, um, yeah, Kim Shah, if you've got, uh, of course, people who've got uh, questions about the actual homework will need to come into the, <laughs> the hangout. I see, actually, uh, Bill's just joining us in there. Hey, Bill, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Yeah, not so bad. Well, I have a bit of a, I have a, another seasonal cold, um, which is, I, I, I hate colds. I don't know anybody. Do you know anybody that likes Colds? Is anybody who enjoys sniffles? Surely um, not. Surely not. I, I, I really trying to work out what they're for. I mean, who knows what they're for, really? I think <laughs> the viruses enjoy them. Um, so test your character. In, well, indeed, indeed, so it doesn't kill you. It makes you stronger. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so uh, yeah, I was just. Um, I don't know if you can probably see, you see my screen. The no, moment you can. Yeah, I was just uh, reflecting on um, some of the materials that have been released recently. How are you doing, uh, Bill, on um, Homework uh, 1, Part 1? I finished it yesterday. Uh, oh, okay. but I had, I'm kind of refactoring a little bit, and mm -hmm, I'm helping mm -hmm. you know where I can. So I, it looked like you were going to have a big crowd today, so I was jumping in on the live view YouTube stream, but yeah. um, you mentioned that not many people were mm. in, so I went ahead and hopped in. Yeah, surprisingly, maybe because of the way in which I, I kind of said to people, oh, if you, if you haven't got anything to share, I mean, um, because it, it looked like... Yeah, the, the numbers that we had, there were 22 registers going and, and nine as uh, maybe. It looked like it, it could have been quite a crowded one. We have, we have had ones before where they've had nine or ten people, but I guess um, uh, a lot of people maybe are, are yeah. I mean, it'll be, I mean, all you guys have got seven viewers out there on the live stream. There's plenty of room in here if you want to want to come in. I, I guess there's a sort of a natural shyness on the part of people who are not me. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm strange. I, I kind of, I, I pretty much want my programming activities to be broadcast permanently 24-7, really. Not that I actually program 24-7, but, um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I kind of, I, I tried in the past, actually, to set up these Hangouts and have them ongoing, and actually, you know, it kind of, they expire after a while. I mean, obviously, Google uh, managing their resources sensibly there, but I, I just like a sort of a permanent thing so that whenever I open my um, editor, that my, my coding activity is being shared with the rest of the world. But I'm, I'm strange, really. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Well, great to have you with us, Bill. Ready for the, to, to hold off the the hordes. Um, but uh, yeah, people in the audience, if you've got any text questions and you don't feel like coming into the the main hangout, then um, uh, by all means jump in. 
um, in terms of asking questions in the, the, the Q and A system, or and I wonder. I mean, I, I guess I can display the. I mean, here for example. I guess I don't. I don't have a way of. Okay. Um, so Kim Shah is asking. There are like five scenarios in Part B. Do I write them all of them in one feature file? Uh, I think you certainly can, Kim Shah. That's um, uh, not a problem. Uh, you can split them up if you want to do. But I think nothing in the uh, way that the homework is is graded is is going to um, you know penalise you for for that. I mean, interestingly, for this homework, unlike um, some of the previous homeworks, where, for example, with homework three, you had um, mutation testing going on. Um, the 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 in this legacy homework, the type of I mean, let's pull that pull that out for part B for reference. Um, the only thing that ultimately is going to be tested by the grader is the functionality on the the site that you deploy to Heroku. Um, really, what this is about in in, in this case is, you know, you. To, to, to work effectively with a legacy code base, you know, kind of using the tests and using the specking is is gonna, you know, save you time and prevent you from break, breaking other functionality. That's what it's critically going to do. Um, but so then, kind of, you know, details of how you, you know, how you split up your scenarios over your feature files, or you know, whether you create new spec files for your um, uh, your specs, or you, you know, move them in with existing because uh, there's lots of existing specs on the system, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of up to you. Um, it, it's whatever you can um, uh, manage easily, really. And uh, Pete's joining us. Hey, Pete, good to have you with us. Um, I the other thing that I thought would make this a busy session is we, I've been fielding uh, quite a few questions about this homework in the, um, uh, in the, in the, ch in the live chat um, over the last few hours. And um, so, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, how, how's it going with you, Pete? I'm okay. How are you, Sam? Yeah, not too bad. Bit of a cold, as I mentioned. I, I mean, hopefully it's a mild one. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. How, how are you doing with okay. part one, part one? Um, not great. I'm having trouble getting my specs to um, uh, to fail in the way that I'm expecting them. Oh, okay, okay. You know I, mean? I, I, I do indeed. I, I, it is a common. Yeah, uh, such is how we spend, how developers, I think, spend much of their lives. Why isn't this spec failing in the way that I expect it to fail? That's that is indeed the key question. Um, are you in a in a situation where you would um, uh, like to screen share and show us some some code? We could start um, picking that apart. Okay. Cool. Yes, I noticed we're up to um, ten viewers on the on the stream. That's probably a new high for for me. We're, we we notice we're in the. Um, uh, I believe the, the the tail end of you know obviously there's um, what is that guy's name Sai with um, 500 billion views or whatever on on YouTube that represents you know you can imagine the, the sort of curve as you go down we're in the very 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 long tail somewhere out past the orbit of Pluto um, with the popular popular viewing here but uh, yeah great to have um, 11 viewers and uh, uh, Alex Alexander's joined us in the video call Alexander great to have you with us um, uh, do um, I would. If you uh, just do a sound check, Alexander, can you can you hear me okay? Um, you will have been all that sort of thing automatically muted. I see you've taken your mute off now. Not everyone has a has a microphone, but um, yeah. And uh, you know, any questions from the audience? Do indeed uh, feel free to to, to chime in. Um, Alex, I don't know if you've if you've I do got have a, a question. If, uh, unless you're in, if you've got somebody going. If not, I've got a question. Yeah, who, who's that? Is, that? is that Bill? Yeah, that's Bill. Oh yeah, no, go ahead. I, I think uh, we'll be getting to Pete momentarily, but go go ahead with the question, Bill. Okay. Um, well, my code's complete, but um, I'm like I said, I'm refactoring a little bit. Can you address a little bit about um, handling partials in the controller? Like, I, I've got some logic for hiding the merge button unless it's an admin or you know mm -hmm, to, to mm -hmm. match the specs. But I'm I'm using logic in the view there. That's just an if, and I don't. I want to. I, I feel like that should move into the controller. And, okay. Um, I'm not sure how to go about that. Right. Yes. I mean, I think that that um, you know, uh, often in the, in the view, it it you know, uh, there's going to be a sense in which there are if statements. Um, what you 
want to particularly avoid is complex Boolean logic. Um, but something that we do a lot actually in the Agile Ventures uh, local support project recently where we're doing a similar sort of thing which is like showing some things to admins and, 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 and not to other users and so on. Um, actually maybe I can just quickly grab, I wonder if I've got that code to hand to show you exactly what, what, um, what we do. This is actually one of the things I like about um, the, um, the Agile projects uh, or the Agile Ventures framework with the open source code is we can go and, um, you know, there's no, like with, with the homeworks there's this thing of, oh, you know, we can't necessarily reveal uh, the solutions in order to try and make it fair. Whereas I'm just going to look for if we've got uh, this is an example view from the local support projects. And if we quickly go and look at no, where would it be? I think we've got the show page here. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That's all. That's for pages of organizations. There we go. So the the surrounding things won't necessarily make much sense, but you can see this line here, line 32. Um, and this is this is a you know, for an organizational page. And what you know. Before we might have had, you know, an if statement with various complex functionality or boolean working out if this this is effectively an edit button uh, should be shown or not. And what we've done is we've uh, created a, you know, an instance variable here, the, the at editable, which is set in the controller. Uh, so if I go and show here, like so, and then you can maybe see here. I don't know how much this, we we can obviously look at this, uh, uh, you know. Do, do come and join an Agile Ventures meeting. We can look at these things in, in detail. But um, you can see here how we've got now, effectively, the editable is a flag that we're passing through to the view. But the logic of who can edit what is, you know, pushed into the model itself, like the user, if that makes sense. So in your view, you had link, uh, or what was that? View of true or something? Link to we if. have link to if. Yeah. So the link only if. So we, you mean you could you could imagine having a partial. Where you and you only pulled the partial in based upon the the flag. Here we're just at the level of if it's a single button that we want to display or not, you can do this kind of link to if and then you know with the flag. So link to if what's that? Is that Rails syntax or? Yeah, that's I think that's um, yeah it's it's Rails templates you know ERB. And one of the nice things about RubyMind is I can do this and and uh, which is Command B and that takes me straight down to URL URL helper to RB. So we can see that this is um, part of action view, part of part of Rails. Hmm. That's one of the reasons I really like using RubyMine. And oh, by the way, free RubyMine for people who want to come and join our uh, Agile Ventures. But I guess I should uh, get on to, I mean, that's, that's a really thing. I think Pete Scott, looks like Pete might have his uh, code ready. Um, uh, the just as Gabriel was asking in the, the, the streaming, whatever it is, outside, outside thing. First scenario talks about a non-admin user, but we only have an admin user. How can we do a non-admin user previously? Um, so, Gabriel, there, there is, um, you know, that's where you would need to adjust, um, you know, and create a non-admin user. Um, the precise details of that, if you wanted to come into the main uh, hangout, um, we could look at that in your code and where that would need to, um, where that would need to happen. So, uh, Pete, yeah, do you want to talk us through um, what, uh, what, where you're up to, what's, what, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, sure. Um, like Lawrence in the background. Because the form has already been created in, mm. in form.html.erb, mm -hmm. um, I've added a new button in um, to the bottom with the well, yeah. Uh, yeah, article ID that. input. Um, and that submits the same form as same form. A, a save word or Which is probably uh, yeah. yeah. OK, I see that. So it goes into the same method, um, the content controller, new or edit. OK, yeah. Uh, then I detect to see if my form was submitted with the button I created. OK, um, yeah. yeah. And it should have a merge with parameter. Right. And then I call um, merge with, which is a, a model um, mm. method. Right. Where I'm stuck is yeah. uh, that uh, when I um, in my test. Yes, yes. So this is you've got, uh, you've got this is a, within the existing content controller. Yeah. You added uh, a describe context there of describe most of articles. Most articles, right? So you've got and there's some of the, some of these specs here. This is should detect an edit submission. Using the merge button, some of them are passing, are they? And, and there's one particular that's failing, or, or where is it? Yeah, um, some of them are still pending, 
this one, uh, it should get the article to be merged as parsing. Mm -hmm. That's just because I've stubbed the yeah, merge with method. Well, okay, yes, yes. Uh, this one is failing because it never received... Well, it tells me that the... Yeah, merge so you look at the actual... Do bring up the actual error message that you're getting yeah, there? Sure. Uh, so that, that's the line that's triggering the, the failure there. Yeah. Uh, article should receive merge with. And so you're getting a failure there, a merge with two. Uh, or am, am I looking at the right, the right uh, error? No, that's the wrong output. Ah. Let me run that test Well, again. while you're doing that, I'll just mention to others who've joined the, the Hangout, we've got um, Matthew and uh, Lawrence and Alex. If you've got... Um, uh, issues that you want to um, show and share with us, then do get your VM up and running, and uh, you know with the appropriate error or bits of code that we want to look at. Um, Matthew, I think we're getting your live video, which is lovely to see you. That no requirement that you share your live video uh, with us, and sometimes depending upon your internet connection, the, the live video stream can affect the audio stream. Of course, if you can hear us, fine, then that's not a problem. So, uh, is this now the correct? Error that no, it's uh, no. I was just running the wrong test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So you're you're using the the approach there, bundle exec, controller spec, and you've got colon five six four to pinpoint the um the line number. Um, that's really one of the things I also particularly like about RubyMine, um, is that I can um just do a kind of a right click on the actual the uh, the spec itself and say run that that run that spec and it'll run. Inside RubyMine, and um, you know the stack traces and so on will be hyperlinked so that I can click on any of them, and it takes me immediately to the line numbers. I often feel it does um, uh, speed things up a lot, uh, a lot for me. But um, you know, everyone has their their. Uh, you use would know which um, editor are you using there? Are you in um, Emacs or something? No, this Sublime. is Sublime. Sublime. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Right. So let me see the error there. Yes. So the yeah, so let's have a look at the error there. Um, we expected to receive that one time. We didn't mm -hmm. receive it any times. Uh, it's line 570. Uh, yeah, so let's go back to the um, editor and have a look at uh, line 570 again. Um, line... Well, it, 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 just, if you just click on the editor on? somewhere, it's. I think you've already got line 570 highlighted underneath your terminal. Um, so, so there you go, yeah. So... Now, what you're saying is that, uh, okay, in, in the previous described merge two articles, um, you are, that, that, that's passing, and the, it should get the article to be merged as passing, but then um, in this next one, it should use the model to merge content of both previous articles, is not, uh, okay, so the article should receive merge with donor ID, so you're doing the post edit, yeah. Now, so the, the thing that I would be tempted to do there, I, I think maybe you've been doing, is to be using the debugger to see if I'm, you know, we were actually hitting the correct location. So I see, like, for example, on, on line 158, yeah. you've got a debugger statement and that's commented out. So, uh, I mean, do you want to uncomment that and, and run again and see if we get hooked on the debugger? Um, now, what, what, uh, did you already get certain... I mean, continue, continue doing that. So save that and run that in the background. But while you're doing that, um, do you want to... Tell us the the what was happening when you previously did this with the debugger. Um, yeah, I got a bit confused because it was stopping on that debugger point in the previous test. Right. And it wasn't um, what I expected. So then, when I continue past that point, yeah, go into yeah. the second test. Yeah, um, so that, 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 that's a common thing with the debugger yeah. is if you're running more than one test, then you can get in this strange state where you're not quite sure necessarily which of the tests is actually, and then, and then yeah, that can get very confusing. So yes, definitely with the debugger there, one wants to use um, very, very specific tests. But so here we're very much in that test. So we've got so, up to here. Um, so, so here, and, and uh, you, we're running the very specific test with that specific line number 564 for this, um, yeah, for this one. So here, we, it's got into this point. So I think at the, what I would be tempted to do here is just type the word params and see what the contents of the params hash is at this point. So I've got merge with is two. Yeah, but just type, if you just type params there, and then, uh, yeah. 
So we've got merge with, um, yes. Now I see something there immediately that could be the could be the problem. Um, do you want to type in the full params open uh, square brackets colon merge w underscore with and see what that gives? I, I I can see what I think might be the problem. Um, I guess members of the audience shout out when you think you can see the the same the same problem. Um, I suspect that this is going to return a nil. Let's see if you do merge with like this. Uh, returns to. Oh, it does return to. Okay. Well, no. Uh, then, in fact, so I was noticing in that, in that link there, it seemed like the merge with was actually a string, rather than a symbol, but maybe that's not a big deal there. That's interesting. I was thinking that might be the miss. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is returning to. So if you type n, what happens <coughs> now? Uh, it's n for it's, Nigel or Nick. It's gone into the if statement. It's gone into the if statement. Okay. And it stopped on article dot merge with. Okay. Well, I, I would I would try n one more time there. Because it seems to be hitting that. Okay. And it's then gone off to the. Okay. So it definitely looks like it's going past it. So and it's going there. We've got the, the params uh, merge with. Was a two, would it come up with a two? Well, go, I mean, my next guess then, if we go back to your code, would be that you're at the moment you're doing should receive, and you're not necessarily specifying the um, the, the parameter that's being passed in. So you're saying article should receive. Um, I guess that. So I mean, I would have two concerns here. Is is one that you need the with statement? Is two is whether this article that you're referring to here, which you've assigned to the at article, is that necessarily the same article that's being referred to uh, in the um, the content controls at RB? Right, so you put that like new or edit, and an at article is equal to article dot get build get or build article ID, and yeah. So anyway, you can try. So the the donor ID, like, what's the Oh, the, I guess you're calling donor is the other article. The other article that's to be merged. Right. And you're passing in there to your post edit. Well, you've got post edit ID, article ID, article, article, merge with donor ID. Okay. Yes. So I would be tempted to, to remove maybe the debug statement and just. I guess you've tried already previously with the with donor ID and that failed previously. Yeah. That's why I commented it out. Uh, let's try that again. But yes, you might want to remove the. I guess the. Um... My concern there, I think, if this one doesn't pass, would be that there. What you're not doing, I guess, here is you're not stubbing the article get or build article ID to return precisely that article that you wanted to return. Because in principle, like, so if you, we look at where at, where, where is at article being uh, created um, further, like, further up in, in your uh, content controller spec? Like, uh. that, that's an existing. Yeah, that's in the before step. The before statement there, uh, right? So a factory article is being created, mm -hmm. right? But then, so that that's like one object instance, as it were. Mm -hmm. When um, article dot get or build article ID, this is on line one four five in content control of RB gets called. Um, I think it's creating an, you know, although it's the same underlying article in the database, right? It's not actually the same Ruby object. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think what you would have to do there in order to, to have your test work is you'd have to stub get or build article ID so that it necessarily returns uh, that, or, 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 or you'd do something else with like you know having it do any instance. Um, does that does that make sense? Right. Um, so how would I specify that any instance of article should receive? Well, I think. Um, 
you know, you can do um, its article. You can do like article with a capital A dot any instance should receive that. Um, that's one way to go if you're if you're not. But I, I was going to say maybe we'll. Um, I think we've identified what is probably the sort of way you could just run it there. I was going to. I'm going to while you're doing that. I'm going to look at some of the questions. That Kim Shah is saying. I know the edit article is at this particular question. The question is how do I know which controller? And which action is responsible for this? Because I cannot find edits in contents control or articles that it is not giving. So Kim Shah, I think that the key thing there is that you want to uh, run the rake roots, um, and yeah, you, well, I guess you're mentioning there rakes roots dot rb. Yeah, root dot rb is not giving it by itself, but you want to um, run the rake roots and uh, be analyzing the the output in order to try and work out about the um, you know how this how this matches up. I guess, um, I don't know, did, did you get the same error again there, Peter? It's still running. Still running. Um, yeah. No, it passed this time. There you go. So I think that was probably the problem. Yeah. Um, how would I get to the exact same instance to, to enter the test? Well, for example, if you, st like, so, the, so here, you, so what you could do on line, five, seven, on line 569 is you could say article um, with a capital A dot stub, and then stub get or build article, and say and return your article. So you would be effectively so at, at the moment in in the absence of that on line one four five in the content controller, uh, there's like a you know active record is doing a call to the test database and say oh yes here's some data and I'm going you know we would you you created uh, has been created sorry in in your test with the um, with the factory. Um, but yeah, so yeah, exactly. So girl, but you want a colon at the beginning of the get or build article uh, there. But so in that way, you can control exactly which Ruby object instance is appearing in the test and, and, and is appearing in the application code, and then you could say about what it should receive and not. Right. But, uh, does, conceptually, that, that, that makes sense, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Good show. Excellent. Well, I think and it's an important, I mean, it's a very, you know, the, the, the difference there between the actual object instances and what's in the database and so on is, is, is a, an important one. I notice um, Matthew has got some uh, some code up. Uh, Matthew, did you have a particular question that, that we could um, look at, or do feel free to unmute and um, explain any issues that you're running into. Um, same goes for for Lawrence and Alexander. Um, if anybody if anybody's unclear about ah, so Alexander's saying it's all good there. Okay, fair enough. Um, if anybody's um, uh, unclear about how to share their screen, there is the um, share screen button, and it is the second or third one down on the extreme left when you when you mouse over. Um, Matthew, yes, I've, I've got a question. Oh, go ahead, Matthew. Yes, um, I've got everything working except display not displaying the um, the form if if a user is not an admin. Okay, and I. Okay. I don't know if you can see the can you see the code right now? I can see the code now. You've got the uh, underscore edit. You've got the edit.html.erb partial is open. Yes, and the, this form yeah. is working, but I can't seem to reference the uh, instance variable like article.user. Sure. Uh, I've yeah. tried different things. I've tried using the current user variable, and that doesn't work either. Right, right. I'll tell you one thing, just um, in the comments, you may, this may be a preference. If you notice that there is, you could get um, a nice colorization in the G-Edit here. Oh, okay. Um, there's, um, at the bottom of the screen, there's a plain text option. Um, uh, basically, yeah, there you go. You found it. If you switch to Ruby, I mean, I don't know if it has ERB, but if you switch to Ruby, it will give you a slightly um, more pleasing okay. view of things. There, there you go. Um, and you can actually, in the text editor, if you go, uh, if you go to the extreme top right corner of your entire screen, sorry, uh, left corner. I'm terribly right and left. I've got to have something going on that. Um, if you go into, I think, is it view or search or tool? If you click on the view menu, is it tools view highlight mode there? If if the so the bottom one there, and if you go into scripts there, that will make your default uh, setting. Uh, is it beyond Ruby? It's, it's, I think it's on there now. I wonder if that will default it for the rest of them. Anyway, you, that, that's a couple of different ways to achieve the same effect there. So at the moment here, um, I guess, you, I mean, article user admin, independently of whether it was throwing some error or not, um, wouldn't be the right thing to be doing there. And I guess you okay. know why that is, right? 
it should be in the controller, is that why? Uh, not so much. I mean, I guess here is like the, the, the article.user is likely the user who created the article. It's, and that's sort of not, that may be completely different from the currently logged in user. Yeah, it's tried. Yeah, so I mean, and of course, yeah, there may be issues here with the current user, but um, uh, yeah. That's not an instance variable. Either. Sure, that, that's maybe not available to you in this view. Um, but yes, but the, the um, even if that's not um, sort of backing up to um, the, you know, the the article user is the sort of it's not going to be the same as the current logged in user. And what we do want here is the currently logged in user. Um, so, if, but if you go with this, you know, if current user dot admin question mark, can we see the um, and save that and rerun? Hmm. What can we see the actual specific error? Yeah, it's right here. Uh, uh, that's not it. Wait, yeah, you have to re refresh the page. Yeah. Let me try clicking on it again. Yeah. Now. Seems a little slow. Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm just reflecting on while that's going in the background. Uh, okay. So we're getting right here. here. Yes, it's certainly having a problem of one kind or another. Let's just scroll up, shall we? And because it's it's not saying, for example, that current user is um, not accessible as a method. It's saying something else. It's saying uh, underscore edit dot html dot erb eight syntax error expected parenthesis expecting keyword then or and it's semicolon or thing. So I think actually you've got you have got a problem on line eight, but it's not the fact that the current user is accessible or not. Um, and I think I can see what the problem is. If you look closely at line eight, do you um, see anything that might else that might be wrong with this line? And this is this is this is a tricky. This I mean. Um, I, I don't know your, your background. Have you worked much with uh, Rails and, and particular ERB before? Not with ERB. No. Just with Hamlet. No. Right. Right. And and so actually, this is a ver this I got stuck on this. I mean, I go back a few years. I got stuck on this um, several times. I don't know if anybody else. I mean, just uh, I know it's probably not my fun for you. I don't, if anybody else um, uh, in the in the room, Alexander, Bill, Lawrence, Pete, any anybody else looking is at line eight can equals see equals at the beginning of the line. Exa yes. Well done, Pete. Yeah. So that that th uh, third character in. That equals there. This is the critical thing with ERB, and it's a very. I mean, I, I've, I have torn my hair out with this, these ones with my early Rails days. Um, but basically, when if you look on line nine, you see you've got the is it uh, less than percentage equals form tag. Now, form tag is something that where that we want the output to be displayed in the final HTML, right? And that equals sign will make it uh, make it appear. I don't think that you want a minus there. I think that, I'm not sure, I think that might will do a good comment. But yeah, just bear by itself like that. That's what you want for just bits of Ruby code that are, that are being interpreted in terms of the control flow, but not generating anything in terms of, uh, you know, what gets the, the HTML that gets put into the finally rendered template. Um, so I suspect that that might have been um, the issue there. We'll, we'll see. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. That's it. Okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah. No, I just got to go in as a non-admin user. Right. 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 Okay. Um, well, very pleased to have been able to help uh, you, you with that. I and that's one of the things. I mean, I'm actually more of a fan of. Um, I actually I prefer ERB to Hamel, although that makes me a bit of a pariah in some in some ways. Um, I I find I don't know Hamel's another layer of traction. It's potentially very beautiful, but um, and and it is what we. Um, you know, promoting the earlier earlier homeworks, but um, yeah, I mean, if I, for example, in our, in our you know um, non-profit open source projects, uh, we do tend to use um, ERB. Um, so, uh, I, does anybody else um, have any other? I don't know if I can get the see if there's any questions. All oh, right, we've got um, a question from Fazil in the um, uh, the YouTube stream is asking. So we have to deploy it on local server first. Then push it onto Heroku when it is done, and then submit the password file. Yes, in a kind of um, at the very, very top level, that's 
what you need to do. And in fact, um, you know, this is a gen general thing of, um, uh, I guess, you know, cloud development is you usually want to get something working locally um, before you push it to Heroku. One thing I will say here, actually, is, um, you know, uh, it's probably a bad idea to do all of your work locally and then only push it to, to Heroku or other cloud hosting system uh, after you've built the entire thing. You probably want to get, and, and as I think we recommend in this homework, you know, get the, 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 before you start trying to modify any functionality or do anything else, is just get kind of like a baseline of things working. So um, I'm just trying to think if we've got a, I've probably got, uh, let me just give a relevant screen here. So we've got uh, this part of the homework here um, getting set up. So getting set up is, you know, one is installing Typo locally, um, you know, getting set up your Trivial Tracker, which is, a, which is a great thing to, to track your progress through, through working through the, the homework. Um, and, and, you know, make sure all the tests run locally, and then make sure, before you change anything in it, make sure that the base installation will then deploy to Heroku. That's, um, that's kind of a critical, I, I would say. Um, and then, you know, as you make successive changes to it, um, I mean, I guess, that, I guess there is really the way that we've got to set up in the, the next part. So B is all Cucumber, which won't, nest, which won't be run on Heroku. So there's no, there's no need to push that to um, uh, Heroku necessarily. And then there is driving changes to specs and the specs themselves. When you get to the point of actually making uh, some specs go green and the, the associated Cucumber things go green, and so you know that you have uh, working functionality, that's a good time to start uh, uh, pushing those things to, to Heroku. And of course, in this in this particular homework, uh, the way that we um, uh, submit things to the autograder is by uh, submitting the password file. So yes, that comes uh, that comes last. Although you can sort of see this, you know, this sort of uh, we've got sort of a cycle here of you know Cucumber, uh, RSpec, um, you know, then you know, the actual the application code. It's working locally. You push it to the cloud server check that it's, you know, do whatever additional checks you, you can to make sure it's working there, and then you come back again, next feature, uh, you come back, you know, change, change it through specs. So this is kind of like, um, although this, this might seem like quite a large homework, um, it's, you know, a, a small sort of, you know, release, release cycle there um, that one would be doing over and over again as one developed a larger, larger app and deployed it to the cloud. I hope that um, answers Fazal's question. Um, so, anything from, from anybody else? Uh, Lawrence, as you're with us, um, you're more than welcome to share your screen and uh, we could give you, try and give you insight on any particular nutty or thorny problem that you're encountering during homework 1-1. One, one. Um, if, there, if there aren't uh, any particular other questions on homework 1, part 1, we could uh, throw things open if people have any questions on um, the upcoming homework uh, one part two, which was released yesterday, or any other um, aspects of the course, we could um, chat about those now. Um, just, uh, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, I may be tempted to. Um, we usually run these sessions for an hour. We've got another twenty minutes till the top of the hour. But um, uh, Yes, I want to save my, my voice. For a now, now, Kim Shah is saying he's, he's found the control on the action but cannot find the relevant view for the admin content edit advice. Well, I think my, my key advice, Kim Shah, given the detailed questions, would be to come into the actual Hangout so that we can be looking uh, in the, um, you know, in a screen share of uh, what, where you're, you're going through there. Um, I think, um, yeah, so you're saying you found the controller and the action, I guess, as a result of my, that was your previous question, uh, and you've been looking at the roots file, and now you cannot find the relevant view for admin content edit. Um, so I think that the key thing there is to be um, understanding the relationships that um, Rails uses to organize its view files. Um, but uh, Kim, do, do you want to just um, join the actual main Hangout. I think that might be a lot easier to um, guide you through this rather than uh, doing it in the the IM fashion. Um, I can repaste the. I mean the Hangout link. Uh, I'll just repaste that. Um, I mean it's still there. It's the latest thing that I pasted in the um, 
I forgot what it's called now, uh, our embedded chat throughout the site, um, which I assume you'll have access to. It's interesting in that the um, uh, it's you know this Q and A system for the uh, for Google Hangouts here is I can see everyone's questions and um, I can you know select them as being uh, the, the one I'm currently answering and, and so on. I can't actually send. There doesn't seem to be an easy, simple way for me to be uh, sending text out. Uh, ah, um, uh, well, while I've been reflecting on that, I see that um, uh, in the so we've also got QA, and then we've got the internal Google chat. So Bill's saying he's got to go, and uh, you know, thanks and good luck. Uh, Alexander was asking, you might have missed it, but what are the Agile Venture weekly meetings and coding sessions? So. Um, what we have is um, a lot of the people who've previously taken uh, the 169 courses have uh, gone on to want to practice their, um, you know, uh, Rails agile development skills in real-world projects. And so we have, um, you know, agileventures.org is our kind of, um, it's, it's not fantastically pretty, it's just a placeholder, really. But we've got all of the projects um, there. Uh, and basically each, you know, all we have ongoing coding on these projects uh, local support is sort of the classic one, Ruby and Rails. We have a, a client in, in London who is an, a non-profit, is a charity, and we do do work for them. We've got, in parallel with, as, as you're probably all aware of, the, um, uh, uh, and Lawrence just saying he, can't, he has a mic problem. So can't contribute. Lawrence, not having a mic is not a, not, a, not a reason to not be able to contribute. I'll mention a couple of things. One is if you have a pair of headphones, you can plug them into the mic socket on your PC and that will operate as a mic. But also, Lawrence, if you had some bit of code that you were uh, struggling with, you could easily screen share that, and I'd very happily uh, try and help you with it while you did text chat in the, in the group chat. Um, but I was just, w while you consider uh, that, I was just going to go here and show that we've got, um, so this is the pair programming com community, which is um, kind of the parallel of the edX uh, SaaS community that we have on G+. And so, um, of course, we've got the events in um, edX uh, SaaS, which um, correspond to today's tutorial session and um, pet programming and so on. But uh, we can also see we've got some of the, the Agile, I post the Agile Ventures, the weekly meetings where we coordinate the different projects that we're working on, all the open source non-profit projects. Uh, but we, we manage the pair programming, so um, through this, uh, this Google Plus community here. So you can see um, there is, uh, I think that's actually ongoing, people programming there on local support right now. Um, we use uh, Pivotal Tracker and all of the uh, tools from within the uh, from in the projects uh, that are that are you know advertised in the course to work in real life projects. Anybody can join in. Um, you can see here this is the local support tracker. Um, we currently have we just done a um, uh, a reboot of the of the of the site. This is the um, the li this is the live site that um, has been developed by uh, exclusively by remote pair programming by uh, uh, 169 alumni. From around the world, um, it's you know anybody you know whatever your level of ability, um, everybody welcome. Uh, all you need to do is just um, uh, you know start turning up to some of these uh, weekly meetings or pro programming sessions, and uh, you know everybody can get in, get involved. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to the Q and A system there. Uh, okay, so Kim Shah has has said yes, he, he's going to uh, come and find that the hangout. Um, so that's good. Um, we've got a few other people have joined us. We've got uh, now who's this here? I should make sure I get everybody in my contact list. Uh, so that's uh, Vito. Hello, Vito. Uh, great to have you with us, Vito from Brazil. Um, Hello, thank you. And uh, ah, is that is that uh, Fazal has joined us? Hello, Fazal. I think yeah, you were you were asking, and and Kim Shah is here. Great, you know, well done for making your way into the hangout. It wasn't as crowded today as we thought it might as we thought it might be. Um, so, um, uh, Kim Shah, if you want to share your screen and we can follow this, um, I and mean, this is I think one of the one of the potentially challenging things about this homework, or definitely challenging things about this 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 homework, is that um, you've got a very large system and it's got its own peculiarities of layout and so on. And part of the, the, the you know, getting it out of the starting block, so to speak, is finding to the, the point, finding your way to the places in the code where you need to make changes, uh, and that can be uh, a whole challenge in of itself. So I think there we've got uh, Kim Shah's uh, screen there. But uh, I was, uh, anybody who's got um, 
any questions at all about the you know Agile Ventures ongoing uh, open source nonprofit free for all um, coding things, just you know if you want to get in touch, uh, I'm 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 the point man for, for that. Uh, but lots of information on the agileventures.org site. Um, I see. Okay, Sam, actually, can you hear me? I, I can hear you, Kim. How are you doing? Or Kim Shah? How, how should I say your name? It's okay. You can call me Kim. Oh, Kim. Great. Uh, yes. So uh, I see Lawrence. Can is I now show you my screen? You can show me your screen. Please do do go ahead. I can see your screen right now. I, I think you're, you're sharing the hangout back of me, which ironically okay, allowed cool. me to see the group chat um, where Lawrence has another question. But uh, yes, let's focus on on right. anyone. So do you want to just tell us? Wait. So so you did the roots thing, and you've now you've now found perhaps the is it the appropriate controller? Uh, yes, I noticed that I'm supposed to put in a merge with the articles button below something called you can associate the following resources. So I noticed that there are two partials. One is the attach. Oops, sorry. One mm -hmm. is this uh, attachment dot html dot erb mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the show resources dot html html dot erb. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that since they are partials, there, there must be some bigger view file that's calling these two, one of these two mm. partials mm. for the edit action. And am I correct so far? Yes, I'm just looking at... I, well, one of the things I was just to back up there and say that if you look at some of these matches you're getting, I was noticing uh -huh. that the further ones down are actually uh -huh. in hyper coverage slash index.html. So they're actually appearing in... Mm -hmm. um, the the R coverage stuff. But yeah, you've got two here. You've got admin content attachment and admin content show resources. I, I think it's it's not necessarily the case that these things are both being pulled in by some larger overriding uh, page. It's uh -huh. more. Uh, I think in this case, particularly with this legacy app, it may be that there are places where the same text is being used in multiple places, oh. and maybe. That app is not as dry as it could be. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> so this is one of the things about the. the I mean, I, I think if you've identified the appropriate place in the controller, usually uh -huh. there's a, some kind of mapping from the controller to the the views. So why okay. don't we look at the the place that you've identified in the controller? So you found content controller to RB in uh -huh. controllers admin. Correct. And uh, so, which are the um, which are the uh, methods in there that are uh, looking to you like they might be rele relevant? I definitely think it's this one. You think that uh, edit one there? Correct. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Uh, so I think yes. I mean, we're kind of we're, we're on the article edit page, so mm -hmm. uh, that's a reasonable thing. But now, by looking at this um, edit method, can we see c what 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 template do you think this edit uh, method is going to be returning? Or what oh, is it ultimately going to be this written? one. Yeah, this method. This look, look at this method, yeah. Right, so what, what is that new or edit there? What, what is that? It's, uh, I guess it's a view file. I don't think it is a view file, actually. Oh. I think, I mean, this is one of the, I guess, maybe Let fundamental ambiguities. It's a view file. There. I think, yeah, if you search... See, I mean, if you were using RubyMine, then you could do con you could do Control B, and it would you would jump immediately to the new to the new or edit uh -huh. method. I think you'll find that that's actually a method oh. lower down in the file. Oh, I found it. Yeah. It's here. So if we look at the new or edit method, uh -huh. we can see that that's a bit of a more complex thing, and we Correct. can see various other things that are happening. Uh, okay. Render new. Okay, so it's new there. Is it responsible well, for this? Well, in some cases, I think that, now don't jump to that conclusion, you've got a long method here, and there uh -huh. may be some other rendering or redirecting going on, depending upon what's what's happening there. But, uh, cool. uh, yeah, but, so, but certainly you would be, you know, a, a reasonable thing to start investigating the new template that's associated okay. uh, with that, because you know, at least in some circumstances, um, the new template's going to be called. Um, so then by looking at the new template, we can see some other things are going on. It looks very bad to me, so... Uh, it looks bad. It looks bad. Bad to you in what sense? No, not bad. It looks bare, B-A-R-E. Oh, it looks pretty uh, bare. Yes, yes. Well, it, 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 it's, it's you know, as I say, only four lines. However, it's doing 
it's doing something else. It's it's not it's not okay. that's not the only template involved. Ah, Can you tell by looking okay. at um Yes, it's rendering admin shared edit here. Mm, exactly. So, so it's pulling in a partial which you've now found. Okay, and um, this is the form, I guess. And it renders another partial. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm uh, I'm a little bit lost. How does this one? Yes. Result? So this is. I mean, this is one of the things like uh, that I think is quite complicated about this setup. Is then it's rendering the part the, the form partial, but you haven't got it in the admin. Chair. But th but think think about go back to the previous uh, template that you were this in, one? which I think was the new.html.erb, right? Now that said render admin edit shared using a relative path, right? So how did you uh -huh. find that admin shared position? Admin how did you how did you find that edit file? How do you know where to look to find that I, edit I'm, file? I'm, I'm guessing it's in it's in the it's it's in the views relative to the views. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've got kind of weird reviews. And so I mean uh, what you did there is you went into the subfolder admin and the subfolder right. shared, right? And there you found underscore edit. Right. Right. But now compare right. admin shared edit with the bare form. Where might we look for a partial that was called underscore form if we don't have admin slash shared in front of it? Ah. Um. If we don't have admin shared. Hmm. Gosh, that's tricky. There, there isn't any other. Files here is all well, folders. What was where? Where did we find the new one originally? We found the new one under admin uh, content. New oh, so there is a oh this was oh, over here. Mm -hmm. Gosh, uh, that's yes. Why? Convoluted is a word that springs to mind. Why would oh okay. So if it doesn't have, if it doesn't use the word admin, it's uh, it's talking about the folder right. Oh, but it, it's it's not intuitive because I I would have thought that if it says for yes, I mean it's kind of what it's, do, what it's doing, doing there is, is you know with um new and then it's asking for the admin shared, it's doing it relative to the views folder, but when it's asking for the form, it's doing it relative to the parent. <laughs> so it's um okay. yeah, it's, like, it's not okay. it's not easy. It's not easy. But, the, but this is why it's a legacy code thing. There is I mean in, and maybe there was some very good reason and some fantastic coding efficiency thing that they achieved uh, as a result of structuring it in this fashion right. in the past. And maybe not. And we just don't know. And we it's maybe not for us to know. Um, mm -hmm. this is, you know, Typo. It's not something mm. we've constructed for the purpose of the homework. It's a real, you know, serious Rails app with you know warts and all. So I see, I see, I see. So I, I think I found a place. Where yes. Although I mean, again, there's, a, there's there, you're not. There's a number of different ways to do the homework. Mm -hmm. So you, I think, yes, right. you found a place of the several where you, you, you could, you could start doing some work with the view, with the view. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Sam. You're most welcome. Um, so, so Lawrence was asking, though new to ERB, where are styles CSS stored in typo? Um, tried searching through and can't find them. Um, yes, well, off the top of my head, I don't actually know the answer to that, having not spent a lot of time in ty typo. I could spend some time looking for them. I think... Uh, yeah. Okay. So the old, the, this is sort of an older thing. In the new Rails systems, there's a sort of assets folder. If you look in public slash style sheets, um, Lawrence, then I think you'll find that your the CSS files are all in there. That that's how Rails uh, used to do things. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you know this is a slightly older app, and so I'll just type that in there, and that's in answer to uh, uh, to um, Lawrence's question. Um, and I spelled it wrong, but anyway, yes. So, uh, well, we really are um, sort of drawing to a close here, as is my voice. <laughs> um, I don't see any uh, questions from the uh, the broader YouTube cloud. Um, we've got lots more people in here now. Uh, and anything from from anybody else before we before we wrap up? Any other any, anything at all about the course or the um, the homeworks or the lectures or this and the other? Thank you.
Uh, well, if there's if there's nothing else, I think I'll call that a day. It's been great to have you uh, all here for the group tutorial. Really appreciate everyone uh, sharing their code and their desktops and so on with us. I think it's really valuable to see each other's working environments. Um, and uh, I would plan to do another group tutorial like this one, same time next week, um, on the homework one, uh, part two. And uh, yeah, uh, otherwise, best of luck with submitting homework uh, one, part one. And uh, this is really probably the hardest homework. Once you've, once you've completed this homework, you're over the hump, so to speak. So um, yeah, I do hope you enjoy the rest of the course. And look forward to seeing you in future uh, group tutorials and indeed pair programming sessions if you're interested in. Uh, polishing your skills outside of the context of the, of the course. We do have um, Agile Ventures, um, you know, meetings every Monday, uh, meeting, live meetings with the um, real-life client every, every Friday. You can see the Agile process unfold before you. And, uh, yeah, you can just observe to start with. No, 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 you don't have to, you know, I think a lot of people say, oh, no, we couldn't possibly do that because they would, we would, like, I would be exposing our code and I'm not very good at code yet. It was, doesn't matter how good you are at code. It's all, you know, it's all designed to be, um, uh, novice friendly, um, and uh, you know you can just tr drop into some of the hangouts, like we do with the group tutorial and the pair programming sessions, and uh, and and watch and see what's going on. All right, well I'm going to stop the live broadcast. Thanks to everybody out there. We had we got up to seven. I think we had a peak at eleven viewers uh, there for this week's group tutorial. It was very exciting. I don't know. I was excited. If no one else was, um, great to have you with us. Um, see you again soon.